The thing about Gemini is sometimes you gotta do it twice or thrice. That's what she said. <laughs> 40, 500, 600 times, with these many branches I'm called to climb, all emanate from the same trunk, I say. Push the wrong button, you see. But then I was educated in the process. Sometimes we fall so we can learn. Because now I know that I can simply type at Maria Stark in the description of the video and a link to Maria's page comes straight up. And you can find Maria Stark at Maria-Stark, M-A-R-Y-A-Stark.com, where you can find incredible music, original song, vocal coaching, language kung fu, Scarlet Crow, an amazing band that is saving the world in a very particular and beautiful way. And you can find me, Agent1123, Gemini Brett, at morethanastrology.com if you're liking. And so what we're doing here is stalling just a little bit. So friends, come on, because we had a good we had a good crew. And then I pushed this button that said finish. Actually, I'm gonna move the mouse just away from there now. Oh, very nice. Um, and I'm gonna try to social mediaize this thing. Go here. It's morning song. It's morning song. Good morning, y'all. So nice to be here with Jim and I. Brett, we were just talking about how one year ago exactly today we were together telling story in the mountains of Santa Cruz at a beautiful place called Hawks Hill with Mikey Powker mm -hmm. and telling the story of Inanna. And here we are again, preparing for these eclipses, telling some beautiful stories. So nice to see so many friends joining us today. I'm going to do a little sharesies on the Facebook. You know, I'm not seeing it live on the page. Are these technical difficulties? Oh, here they are. Mentioned in a post. Shabam. Why didn't I get mentioned in a post? Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, hi, this is, um, you know how everyone just kind of stares at their phones these days? That's what I'm doing. That's not there. And if I go to the main page, it doesn't really seem to be happening. So people are here. Are we going live sounding and looking good, says Miriam. Nani, thank you. So are you. Okay. Well, I think we just go for it and share at a later date. It's Easy. Just nine in the morning anyway. Sure after. Why don't you drink this amazing cup <gasps> of Tiger's Nest Pu'er tea? To you. Brought here by our great friend, the Tea Monk Po, at Heaven's oh. Tea in Wonderland, mm. a tea room Ooh. in which we first met. That's true. Isn't that true? Aww. Where I was speaking about Virgo, and you made incredible music, if I remember correctly. But today we speak about the shadow. So I could talk about this all day long, and I probably will. But I think we would learn a lot more if we first hear a song. Before the 
the storm? Is this the world? I gave birth to more. Is this the soul? Asleep by the by the moon the space where the light is seated to bloom or is this the shadow that falls from the sky this feast of the darkness You know, it wasn't always this way. Night, then day, then night, then day. This balance of darkness and light that can feel so out of balance. What is the reason for the seasons? Light directed, reflected, directed, reflected again, ever grazing this great body where the game called Earth is played. But far away, a strange day would foretell our own, a gift denied. A garland given to Indra, beautiful, but it was just a garland, or so he thought. He hung it on the tusk of an elephant, he shook it from his face and trampled it below. The gift giver was not pleased. The next gift that was given was a curse. To those who do not know how to receive. And light fell from grace. A weakness overcame the devas. And the forces of shadow claimed the divine city. The queendom of light. Long, long nights. The devas sought advice. Indra himself found his way to Lord Vishnu. And Lord Vishnu told them the only 
remedy was in endlessness and immortality that would be found only by seeking the sweet nectar, the Amrit. He's got the wanderlust, he found an oasis in the sculpture of diamond wings. He's got the stone of tears and he lingers here only to taste the Amrit nectar. It tastes to me like desire. The Amrit lay below milk, an ocean of milk in the fifth out there. Indra asked if they could borrow some heavenly scuba equipment, but there was none that could deal with the pressure of the heavy milk. And so he was told what must be done is to churn this ocean of milk and to churn it and churn it until the sweet Amrita made its way to the surface. How could this be done? Indra asked. And all Vishnu would say is that the Devas are not alone equipped to handle the task. Churning song? It's a churning song time. They were churning that butter. So, what was found is that they could find a mount as a churning rod and would need some gigantic godly rope to wrap around this heavenly pole to churn the milk of ocean below. Mount Manara lent itself as the churning rod and the great serpent god Vasuki gave his body to be this churning rope. But the forces of light did not have the strength to churn this ocean alone. In my heart, light and dark, set a spark, making love, pounding on the walls, on the walls. I can hear rhythm, dreams, mythic seeds, salt and tears, and the pounding on the walls. In the marrow of my bones, sparrow song that goes on, arrows drawn to the winters of her tones, hollow tones. In the rivers of my veins, parted seas, sail again, lovers making waves, pounding on the walls, on the walls, on the walls, on the walls, pounding on the walls. We scratched up the symbols, what we saw, once we saw, churning up the dreams, what we saw, what we saw, in the dreams once remembered, telling all, telling all, telling all, pounding on the walls. I gaze upon the moon, this tune she came a riding. Wise and star made petals of jeweled fake tales for future mining. Sapphire diamond light in your eyes can mighty tides reprise. And where we were fated, civil conflicted, summoning gates we widen. Scratched up the symbols, what we saw, once we saw. Dreams once remember, telling all, telling all. Churning out the shadows, where they fall, where they fall, where they fall. Pounding on the walls. Lie, 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 lie. Lie, 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 lie,
The Asuras, those of shadow, were enlisted to hold one side of this gigantic churning rope that was the snake Basuki. Light on one side, shadow on the other. It was not difficult to convince them to join this sacred task. For the Asuras were told that the Amrita would be shared, that all would know the sweet immortality of endlessness. But who would hold the side that goes hiss? Sometimes light itself can be kind of shadowy, can it not? The devas told the asuras they could join and they would receive the amrita, but that the devas would get the side of the snake or the tongue, and the teeth are found. The asuras demanded the head be on their side. The devas said, no, this is our one and only condition. The asuras said, no head, no shadow, no churn, no amrita, and we keep the city. They had seen what the Davis were after. Finally, the Davis conceded to the Asura's demand that, of course, they wanted to. So, on one piece of land floating in this ocean of milk, the forces of shadow held the head of this great serpent, and on another, the forces of light its tail. And in this heavenly game of tug of war, for a tug of peace, they pulled and pulled and pulled. The mountain turned and turned, the ocean of milk churned and churned and churned. The mountain began to slowly sink. So Lord Vishnu took the form of Korama, a great tortoise, and held that mountain on the back, a strong shell, so that light and shadow could pull and pull, turn and turn, churn and churn. Quickly now, the milk in a vortex spinning, spinning down. And that below began to rise to the surface. There's a shadow cast from light out upon the midnight storm. If I close my eyes, I might hollow out these hollow bones. Taste the honey, taste the milk. Serpent's venom, swallow tail. Woven, broken, threaded silk. From friends I've made with shadows. There is a shadow cast from light Out upon the midnight stones If I close my eyes I might Hollow out these hollow bones Taste the honey, taste the milk Serpent's venom swallow tail Woven, threaded, broken silk From friends I've made with shadow Making friends with the shadow 
to taste the honey, to taste the milk. But what rose first was poison, halala, the great poison, kept in that sea, unseen, until the churning began. So much poison rising to the surface. Surely this game would end with all who had not yet become immortal in death. But Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva was there to save the day. He gathered this poison into his hands, sifting out the good milk and keeping death. He took it into his mouth. He would not save us alone, you know. Pavarti. Pavarti was there to choke his throat, to keep that poison from finding his gut. We were saved. So was Shiva. But ever since his throat has been blue, churning and churning and churning and so many treasures rose to the surface. Lakshmi, who is beauty and joy and abundance. Come the mighty stones, rich as plenty, they are carved from ruins, and the diamonds pour forth, and the golden threads, and under rock swept, poverty slept. It's a rich town where the goddess reigns, it's a rich town where the silver slays, it's a rich town where we have it all, as long as some fellows catch the fall. It's a rich town where the goddess reigns. It's a rich town where the silver slays. It's a rich town where we have it all. As long as someone catches poverty's fall. From the fountains come mighty stones. Riches plenty carved from ruins. Diamonds pour forth golden threads. And under rug poverty slays. When abundance is born, it must be balanced. Lakshmi, goddess of abundance, but also goddess of poverty, came forth at that time from this ocean of milk that was churned and churned. And many treasures rose to the surface as we began to see below the most polished and beautiful diamond ever known. Elephant and horse of white rising forth from ocean of milk. Shine bright like a diamond. A sacred tree that can give anything and everything. And finally, after centuries, millennia, billennia, and more, <laughs> trillennia, <laughs> this milk now churned and churned and churned the poison forth, the abundance, the poverty, these strange gifts that came one after the next and finally at the depths. The sweet Amrita, the nectar of immortality, the promise of endlessness for light and shadow alike.
psych? Do you think the Devas would really enlist the Asuras? With the plan to give them immortality? We shall see. This would be the right thing to do. Regardless, let's tune ourselves to the sweet immortality of the sacred Amrit. He did not come as I had requested. Nor would he stay asleep in the dream. Instead, we arose lucid and fierce, feverish and wild, curious as all hell. Wanderlust, he's kind of always us in the sculpture of diamond wings. He's got the stone of tears and he lingers here only to taste the ambrosia nectar. It tastes for me like desire for liberation. Oh, sky archer, I offer you my bliss. For the target your arrow has begun to pierce Oh Sky Archer, I offer you my dance To peel the veils and leave a script of fire in their wake He's got the wanderlust he found and always has in the sculpture of diamond wings He's got the stone tears and he lingers here only to taste the ambrosia nectar it tastes for me like desire for liberation. They sat and circled up. It had been Trilinia. There was no rush. Let us enjoy slowly the sweet nectar <laughs> of immortality. Forces of shadow to one side and the light to the other. As it is, you know. Holding cups that were filled. But not all of the same caliber. A trick was played. Vishnu taking the form of the enchantress Mohini, a beautiful dancer to distract the Asuras so they would not see a great trick that was being played. The Asuras gazed at Mohini and lost their way in love and lust. Oh, infatuation of mine, what have you come to reveal? How many hearts have you broken? How many kisses you steal? Oh, intoxicated am I? Any time I sense you near, and when I catch myself reflected in your eye, I am faced with a new kind of fear. Backward. 
words in my mind, outlining syllables stenciled in time. My heart is wide open, ready for invading. I wonder how long I'll be sitting here waiting. Well, some were just lost in infatuation and forgot that they were even here or sorry telling at all. Ooh. Ooh. Cups were filled, but in this lust they did not see. It was not Henri that was poured into the shadow cup. Ooh. Endlessness poured for the light that gave us and some kind of substitute, some swag for shadow. But strange, you know, that love sometimes overpowers even this amazing infatuation of lust. There was one on that side of light that Rahu, the Asura, could not deny. And so as his friends were lost, gazing at Enchantress in the amazing ways of dance, trance, romance, he followed the light here to the other side and sat amongst the devas and so mohini with so many arms who was pouring this false nectar for shadow and behind pouring this amrita for light rahu sitting there held his cup and it was filled in this shadow force rank of immortality. Now just then, the neighbors of Rahu in this great circle looked to him and knew something was off. One of these neighbors was known to be a great sage, wise and old, and one was new having been born from the churning. This was Chandra, who we know as Moon, and the other Surya, Sun. They looked to Rahu, they knew something was off, and just after he sipped from cup, they yelled to Mohini, who was Vishnu. This one is not like us. A divine discus was thrown through the air a chakra that took the head from Rahu's body. Do you know any songs about decapitation or anything like that? I may have a song about decapitation. Mm -hmm. All in a day's work, all in a day's We'll talk eventually, I've got my ways. I've got my axe, I've got my blade. All in a day's work, all in a day's. Don't worry, little heads, don't worry now. Yes, it's true, I'm here to usher you out. Don't worry, little heads, don't worry now. Soon you'll be off of those necks and into good hands. Don't worry, little heads, don't worry now. I'm here to make light of the situation. No matter which direction you're facing, soon you will be rolling, 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 rolling. I'm the undertaker. <laughs> all in the day's work, all in the day's We'll talk eventually, I've got my waves, I've got my abs, I've got my blade, all in a day's work, all in a day's. Please no undertaker, not today, take pity on me, today's the day that I was born. Nonsense, it's perfect, you'll go out the same way you came in. Happy birthday, don't get so forlorn. No need to plead with me, no need for sympathy. I'm not concerned with how you got here, just concerned with how you're leaving. If you got your head on my chopping block, better you can be sure I'm soon to chop it off. And that's how that song goes. Mr. Travis Puntarelli, we love you. Mwah. Until that song was sung, 
They did not know it was Rahu's birthday. But a tricky present there, this gift. And sometimes gifts are wrapped in such strange paper, are they not? A head left the body, but a body that had already tasted of the sweet Amrit. The immortality. Endlessness. What do you do with an immortal, decapitated head, Gemini? Well, basically, now you have two immortal beings. One known as the head of the serpent, and the other its tail. Rahu and Ketu. Imagine the pain in the heart of the beheaded. A heart disconnected from the head. Flying through space on an endless chase for those who betrayed the trust of Rahu's love. Chandra, Surya, Moon, and sun. Rahu's way became naught but rage. And he chases not only with head Rahu, but with tail Ketu, separating these two. Following Sun, to seek revenge. We will see a glimpse of Rahu's revenge here in less than three weeks time. For Surya Sun climbing high, daytime skies will be consumed by the revenge of a serpent who was wronged. Rahu will eat the sun. So, so you think you've seen fire at the peak of desires, inspiring dream. Where, where you've wandered in wonder, breaking bread with the thunder under some southern sea. So, so you've cast out the shadows, you called to the hellos. And you've ushered in the night, and you've yearned to burn through your boundaries, to call to the soundings, and you've come here tonight. Dance with me, dance the dance of the dragons, entranced by the song of the flame. Dance with me, the dance of the dragon, and see immortality's name. Rahu Ketu Ketu Ne. Rahu Ketu Ne. Friends, get ready to say goodbye to the light. But only for a little while. For this demon who seeks revenge, who will eat our son, has been decapitated after all. 
So shortly after the light is consumed and the riddle of night find its way to the middle of day, <laughs> light will be reborn. From this head disconnected, now seeking the heart of all, the lion's heart. From the lion's gate. <laughs> Marty. So, um, what's it all about, folks? We don't always have a chance and opportunity to ruminate upon the strange symbols of these stories, but why not play this game? How's your time frame, I'm dear cool. Maria? I'm, um, I'm on my own time frame. Oh, wow. I make my own decisions. <laughs> we have Trillinia to get the job done. That's right. I could probably stay for another 45. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Because wouldn't Astro Babble always sound better with a little musical magic? That's right. I'm going to take a little... I see. Right, so friends, Maria Stark. Um, I think I'll dial her website in here. Pardon my approach, if you don't mind. I'm just going to get nice and close and cozy with you. Maria-Stark.com Ari has so much amazing music that you can find your way to from there. I'm going to put my website up while I'm at it. One thing you might want to see in my website more than astrology.com is the events page. If you're here in the States, I am co-hosting a magical happening for this total solar eclipse on August 21st at Paradise Hot Springs, Idaho, Trinity. Join us in Paradise. We are keeping it affordable to gather in community and intentionally celebrate this great light from shadow, this great time of eclipse. Um, I will also be coming Australia way to engage with a Scorpio magic retreat created by the Cosmic Intelligence Agency. This whole thing is just so out of whack, isn't it? Maybe that got worse. Maybe I can just leave that whole thing alone. Are we all so out of whack? What is the reasons for the seasons? Now, um, October 26th through the 29th, Australia time, um, in Hillsville, where we will be healed through magic. Scorpio, Jupiter, Cosmic Intelligence Agency, Scorpio Magic Retreat. I hope you will join us in the hills of Melbourne for some amazing thing. My intent, as it always is, is to bring not only starry story, but um, to reconnect astrology to nature. Truly, astrology is a poetic, poetic singing of nature, not just some heady science. So we speak about the head and the heart and bringing them together in this tale for one and many, many wonderful things. Um, Cosmic Intelligence Agency, also where you are watching this go live. Um, register and become a member um, of CIA and you get all sorts of amazing stuff. But many of these free offerings too. So on the Facebook page where there's the little drop down for following, you can make sure you are elected and you select the uh, receive notifications, including go live, and you have to do something on your own page too. I'm not here to teach you the ways of social media. I can't <laughs> even do it myself. <laughs> but I am here to journey with you into the strange symbols of this story of old. Perhaps the greatest eclipse shadow story ever told. Hello in all caps, it did get my intention. Will you come to New Zealand? Unfortunately, not this time around. Short trip through Fiji on my way to Australia, some days there, and then off to Hawaii to do some work with the great sound healer, John Dumas. And just before, um, Zion National Park with Opa, so 
busy bee cannot make honey in the places he seeks to be. I've not yet visited New Zealand in some day, please. Right. Have you been to New Zealand? Not yet. Hmm. Have you been to the Ocean of Milk? I may have not been to the Ocean I believe of milk. perhaps, Miss Maria Stark, you have, and that perhaps you visit quite often. For what is this Ocean of Milk? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Why milk? You know, there are many planes, it is said, and I'm not too hip on the Hindu cosmology, so let me not try to go too deep into this point. But there are places where the oceans are made of water. Ever heard of them? Okay, there's places where the oceans are made of ghee, and places where the oceans are made of milk. And more than that, too. What is the ocean itself? Let's just go there. What would it be that we have to churn this ocean, the sea, to find immortality, endlessness, the sweet Amrita, the nectar? What is water? What is liquid? What is this connection that keeps the treasure sometimes so buried? And in the dream, and in this waking dream, we often see that the ocean itself represents the consciousness, perhaps the collective consciousness. And so we begin to churn, and this can't be done with light alone. To find our way into the unknown, we must also honor shadow. There is a reason for the seasons. There is a reason why this balance and this dance of day and night. There is a reason the moon was born when this ocean of milk was churned. But first came poison. For the Persians. For when we start diving into the unseen realms of self, of humanity, of the all. We are sometimes very surprised to first embrace or be invited to embrace that which we have been hiding from. That which has steered our course from these shadowy places in a culture committed to conditioning suppression. We can serve the suppressed to control us, or we can control the expressed to serve us. Ooh, can you say that again? We can serve the suppressed to control us, uh. or we can control the expressed to serve us. But this alchemical transformation, which is high mysteries of the Scorpio school, does not happen in a day. First, we must find that poison and perhaps courageously drink of it. And perhaps we will have love, friend, family. Perhaps we find that only through this isolation of the strange awakening that surrounded by thousands of people we can feel most alone, but perhaps that is the initiation for us to find and know that we never truly are. And so there is another who will choke the throat, but gently, so that that poison can be processed, can be voiced and not swallowed and taken into a place where no longer we could know it. Song is not meant to be digested, but rather expressed and moved in this way. Churning into an ocean of milk, but what is necessary? The serpent. <laughs> is this serpent language? Um. It's a combination of serpent language and like, um, like weird uh, Pleiadian Lumerian light language mixed with a little like underground uh, demoness of the light language. I told you she's strange. <laughs> but 
Yeah, maybe as strange as I am. Strange. So this strange awakening, you know, going into these shadow places. And the idea is not to tape angel wings to the demons, you know, but to understand that we are more than just what is revealed in the way of light. And that we can bring all of self to the way of light again. I'm not saying you're bad and I must turn you into cotton cloudy rainbow unicorn beings, but to honor all of me and all of you. The forces of light, the forces of shadow, sometimes tugging against one another, but in this great work to churn this ocean of the great unknown so we can find our way sometimes through first isolation and then insulation, maybe protection, as we are awakening to this connection that we are all one and feeling sometimes that weight of the worldly poison that maybe seems it has nothing to do with us. Waking up from a confusion that kept us blind to that which keeps us in pain. But as we feel that betrayal and work through this rage and anger as it is for many of us, we also find this gem, we find abundance. We find also poverty and balance. protection, an interesting scene, is it not? I mean, awakening to this empathy, awakening to the truth that there is only one sea, that the water holds the memory of all that has ever been, is, and will be. This cup of tea has some of, like, Pythagoras's piss in it, you know. Wow. That's really? deep. That's some, that's some deep piss right there. <laughs> I mean, we're all connected. The water has been everywhere, not only in what has already happened, but in what will happen. And I could get into a whole, you know, Pythagorean transmission about how this is the earth and this is the air and they are inverse and that this is the fire, which is the inverse of itself, but that the water is the inverse of the ethers, which is the all. You see the magic of this amazing element of connection. It comes through song. to the star forming the shape of the instrument of the bar I've seen their sound rain down from the sky's gentle heart as there is song seems to a love awakening from out of the silence and into the sound I've seen the footsteps of angels dancing as they weave into miracles Miracle of water, the hidden messages in water. We are all connected. Our intention, our even our words, our love can realign the crystalline structure 
of water, which is the all. And so are we. We are not some lonely boat in the middle of the sea. We are the sea itself, but that connection sometimes calls for protection. The waters of the heavens rain to the earth to connect them to the lakes and rivers. But the rain can be so depressing when we feel the heart of all that is, we feel also the poverty, the suffering, the pain, the shame, the guilt, not only through our own way, but through this way that the all expresses itself in the many, many beings. And this we find when we turn deep and deep and deeper into the sea. And so the tortoise shell to protect me as first I find my way into this churning, the tortoise, the being that can take its head inside itself to explore the shadow, protected in this way from the crazy chaos happening by night and day in the world without, which we find within is merely a reflection of us. And that might taste like poison at first, but it becomes polished into the sweet diamond, into the tree that can give anything. There's something about a white elephant and a white horse, I don't know. I hear a gigantic lemon bag was born during the process too. It's a lemon! It's a lemon bag. It's a bag that is in the shape of a lemon wedge. <laughs> Should we see that again? Look, look, look at it! It's glorious! <laughs> And dragons, big ups, enough respect to my cousin Kyle, my nephew Kyle. He's like a cousin, we're all cousins. You know, I was on a tour recently speaking about eclipses, a tour that was called in some places Eclipse Magic, in other places Enter the Dragon, in other places Chasing the Dragon. And I was cruising around with this dragon here on my altar as I was speaking about eclipses and shadow. And then I saw my nephew, Kyle, and he said, Hey, Unc B, I've got a present for you. Bam. <laughs> he didn't know, or did he, somehow, that I was out speaking about dragons. Now, why was I speaking about dragons? Why is it the head of the dragon, Rahu, that eats the sun? Or the moon? Or how can the tail do this too? Which is a very interesting tale I have not yet heard and would like to. Why in China was it said a dragon eats the sun? Why dragons and moons and suns seen everywhere? Well, first, another thing about the tortoise, because I would like to honor Hermes, Trismegistus, Mercury, Thoth, Juhuti, who had said on the first day of his life, relieved a tortoise from its shell and stole his brother Apollo's herd to relieve one of these cows who you know produce milk of its guts to make three strings for that tortoise shell to create harmony. This is when Lyra the harp, which would become the guitar was born. And you see, the tortoise takes the head inside to explore the shadow and can get stuck there in the rabbit hole. Have you heard the one about the tortoise and the hare? But when the tortoise comes back out to the light, maybe not so violently so, but Psychopomp Hermes has his own strange trickster ways. We can realize there was a point of churning. There was a point of finding our way to that poison. There are diamonds in the rough. If you're given coal in your stocking, celebrate. <laughs> but you now must do the work to unlock the priceless gem. The tree that can give anything. And you are this creator. So the shell protects the quest within, but perhaps when we come back from the shadow into light, we can release the shell. For in a world called love, there is no such word as protection.
Take our time with that one, though. Why can light alone not find endlessness? Do we want it to be day all the time? What is the reason for the seasons? Are not the sweetest poems written in the midst of night? Night is not only a phenomenon found through the spinning of Gaia on her axis. Well, look at that. A spin axis. Forces of shadow and forces of light. Churning and churning and churning this ocean below. Mm. So treasures will rise to the surface. Whoa. You see, scientists. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Scientists will tell you that these old tales are myths. <laughs> the cave people lost in their own strange ways of not being able to see the truth. No, even the fairy tales, you know, and sometimes perhaps most of the fairy tales hold the great codes embedded into places where they not would, could hide. It's simply a tale for a child. And so preserve the dance of Venus and Mars and the great story of Rapunzel. Dance of Venus and Earth and Sun and the great tale of Anana, which is in no way <laughs> some fairy tale, but a tale of the great goddess of heaven and earth. And as we celebrate this anniversary of our storytelling of that tale from Hawks Hill, near Santa Cruz with Maria and Mikey Palker. I think I'm gonna put a link in here of that telling. We might have to hear just a second of it while it comes up. Maybe I can be proficient with the tech. Yeah, I hope you'll check this out. It's one of my favorite nights. And I'm having a lot of fun today too, Maria. Me too, Jenny. So you see the axis, the mountain, the shadow, the light, the spin, the churning, the oceans. We are here to explore this togetherness among many other things, to come to face that poison as we dive within, to come back into light, to release the shell as we find love. And in these times of great eclipses, when the dragon eats the sun, a new light can be born. And here in this way of the Leo mysteries, the artist who intentionally and artistically and playfully and roaringly chooses to paint the canvas called life. We are our own masterpiece. But we must also claim the responsibility, perhaps, and choosing to own that sacred brush that everything on the canvas was painted by us. Light and shadow alike. So the moon was born in this churning of the ocean. At least Chandra. No moon, no eclipse. And perhaps when they sat side by side, what is moon and sun side by side if not new moon? But until the dragon's head came between, we would never know eclipse. And so in many cultures around the globe, I'd like to say new, certainly old, sun, moon, and serpents, dragons. Why? Can hear a little bit of that dragon dance again? Oh, you change your tuning. Dance with me, the dance of the dragon, entranced by the song of the flame. Dance with me. The dance of the dragon and breathe in her name. 
and breathe in her name. Immortality's game. Breathe in her name. Dance of the dragon. Just take a moment to honor the magic of Maria Stark. Did you notice, folks, that she had retuned her guitar and then I asked her to play a song in a different tuning and just so quickly with a turn of a peg and it's on. <laughs> and that the lyrics of the song perhaps a little bit rearranged to accommodate the tale today and a song written this morning. Like that. Art, a Leo Mercury at the Midheaven, by the way, reflecting cancer light because there is a caring ocean that comes through these transmissions of medicine art. Yeah, and so we all have our own soul song. We all have our own chart. This eclipse will show itself for each of us in a house, in alignments to particular planets, to the sun of a composite, to a Mercury out there. Who's to say? what it is for you or me. Astrology, that's who. Rahu Ketu, the head and the tail of the serpent, of the dragon, you see. We have a new moon every month. Solar eclipses happen at new moon. It's the moon between the earth and sun. Well, if moon comes between earth and sun, Chandra and Surya sitting side by side every month, why? Do we not experience the sun shadowed by moon, spirit by soul, every month, every 29 and a half days? Because sun and moon from Earth's view are not on the same plane. If Maria is sun and I am Earth, this floor upon, we, upon which we sit we call the ecliptic. I could extend that plane out towards infinity and find my way towards new words like infinity and also find the constellations of the zodiac. So from my point of view, sun will always be aligned to one of those great groups of heavenly stars. And from sun's point of view, so will earth. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine, you make me happy. The wind skies are smoky from fires in Canada. <laughs> You'll never know, dear, how we track the ecliptic with you. <laughs> Please don't take that straight line away. You are my moonshine. You are my moonshine, <laughs> my only moonshine. I you, drank so much tea. You rise up high and But I'm kind of drunk. We're drunk on tea this morning, all singing children's songs about the sun and moon. But you know, it's nice to have a tea teacher like the wonderful tea monk, tea drunk Po of Heaven's Tea, who you could find online, that's so connected that he knows the right voice of these sacred ancient pu'ers that he sources and I find my way to. This one called Tiger's Nest. Why? The tiger, a symbol of power, but also of fear. But we come into the nest and rest in that place that can be so difficult when the poison rises. Cuddle up and learn to purr in that cave of roar. <laughs> and reclaim those shadowy stripes on a body of light. Yes! There's endless symbols here, you know? <laughs> So not only is the spin of Earth about Mount Meru, Mount Manara, with shadow and light on opposite sides, encoded into this great story of old, so much is, but one is the dragons. Because this plane of Earth about sun, the ecliptic, the zodiac, is not the path of moon, who we find travels about the Earth, but really we are in a mutual dance about the great light. And so here is Earth Sun, and here is Moon Earth. There's two points where from our point of view here in Earth matter. We see Soul Moon cross the plane of Spirit Sun. 
and they are called the ascending node where moon crosses to the above from below and the descending node back to the below from above the dragon's head the dragon's tail the lunar nodes rahu and ketu and so if we have a new moon with the moon here and the sun here as we did from northern hemisphere point of view on may 25th a gemini new moon at the moon's southern bending the dragon's belly it's the furthest thing possible from an eclipse for from our point of view here's the sun and the moon's way down here lost in its light but certainly not aligned in such a way that it can block that light from our point of view the balance the prophecies of eagle and condor by the way on may 25th it was moon so far below sun from northern hemisphere point of view and so far above in the southern hemisphere and together we bring this balance that comes that brings it to the middle to the center which is the heart we measure all astrology not from the surface of the earth where the great phenomena of eclipse can be observed but rather from the center for this is the one place where we are all connected our hearts all beat to the drum of mother our flesh is her flesh our bones her stones and in that great heart of gaia the dance of the planets with one another with earth are felt and she radiates out to all of us and this is part of the point of going into the shadow of the leo mysteries to bring back this light the heart of the lion regulus so the dragon because if this is the path of sun the zodiac the ecliptic as vision from matter earth every month soul dances above and below snakes above and below that path of spirit and so a new moon when moon and sun sit side by side every month but only about twice a year will this happen also at this time or this time so soul spirit from my point of view which are moon and sun coming together in longitude and latitude and you see so the white coats who say the myths are just these old stories they mm. lose the truth mm. of mm. sun and moon mm. and their great marriage held at dragon's gates 821 dragon gate <laughs> where rahu will swallow the sun but it will then pass where through that decapitated neck so these nodes the head and the tail the body we could say the head and the heart are not separated they are on opposite sides of what this or maybe we could even say it's the tail and the head and here in the middle is the great heart matter earth you and so in these sacred times where the riddle of night darkens the earth in the middle of daylight this great mystery of total solar eclipse the flowers close the birds stop singing the animals to their home temperature drops a strange sensual silence will we witness the magic of this sacred marriage of matter soul and spirit will we see that going into the shadow not only of our own being but into all of humanity species planet system galaxy the all that is ever was and ever will be for what is time in the shadow will we find a new light to shine from the one true heart i say why not 
don't see a good reason why not. Sounds like the thing to do these days, eh? Do you think we might close with that beautiful song that you began with? About ashes and such? Sure. Or a song about the intermarriage. Is that what's happening? Right? Is that what this is all about? That is what this is all about. Is that what this is all about? The intermarriage? This is why you bring the medicine musician to the table. Because she knows more than you. I want to be a creature in your night. Feral and forgiving of the way we love her sweat and start to smell of earth and soil. All along I wish for you to sing into the depths of me I want to be the echo of your voice As you call into the canyon just to see how far it travels I bet we could go distances beyond What our telescopes have seen To our most lucid dreams In worlds of stars exploding And water in slow motion ecstasy in greatest heights Circle around eternal moments where we Meet our maker, pulse and waves, light shaking, woven bodies holding presence as we swear through all the sight, sight, and sights. All the light, light, light. We hold them tight, tight, tight. To the night, night, night. We hold them tight to the echo. We were walking in a distant world, crystalline and clear, not a soul dared enter through the sacred arcs where you were holding a golden spell. Inside I caught a glimpse into a broken realm where prayers were answered slowly like the time's too late. We were singing from the softness of a heart that wanted none of it. We yearned for understanding of why things come down. On that night we made a vow to sing for all the unsung in worlds of stars exploding. The water in slow motion, ecstasy in greatest heights Circle around eternal moments where we meet our maker Ripples and waves, light shaking, woven bodies holding presence Let's just hope we all the sight, sight, sight All the light, light, light We hold them tight, tight, tight To the night, night, night We hold them tight to the echo I want to be a symbol in your dream To dance upon those threads Spelling notes with every step And you could play them through a tiny music box Spinning out the holographic sounds From the mountaintops Everyone could hear the prayer we made under the moon Blue paw on your forehead so you'd know that I was true And when the wind blows now, you'll feel me and remember Waterfalls of diamonds pour into our sweet surrender In worlds of stars exploding, in water and slow motion Ecstasy and greatest heights, circle around eternal moments Where we meet our maker, up with some waves Like a shake of woman, but it's holding presence It's just a view of the sight, sight, sight Or the light, light, light we hold them tight, tight, tight To the night, night, night We hold them tight to the echo We hold them tight to the echo We hold them tight, 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 tight Hold me tight Heroes Gaimos, the sacred marriage in the heart, the one heart. Sometimes these forces of yin and yang, and there are many representations of light and shadow can feel like they are pulling us apart, but still the attention comes right here. Mm. And so next time we will speak about Young Hanuman, who holds Sita and Ram in his one heart. 
And the day that he chose to eat the sun, for of course, isn't it nothing more than a ripe mango? And I think that tale will be told in Hillsville, mm -hmm. Australia, on October 26th at the Cosmic Intelligence Agency retreat. Mm -hmm. So I hope you can join us. Maybe if there's internet out there, we can go live for the whole community. Thanks for being in this community and for having me and Maria. Thanks, Gemini. It's been great to be here. Thanks, everyone. And your tribe and your family. I hope you have enjoyed this strange storytelling um, with its forgotten parts and interjected others. Yes. Because why not? Aren't we all creators? <laughs> yes, you are. We love you, and we will see you in space.